Hey guys, Pascal here and in this video I show you how I focus on the GH5 and I'm on my way to the Hat Tong Rang beach now. It's a pretty secret hidden beach on Koh Phangan here in Thailand. Amazing, so let's check it out. So I already used the firmware 2.3 with the GH5, but it's still a problem to focus properly, right? Because, I mean, you, you can never be 100% sure that it won't hunt for the focus or something. And the kind of video that I produce here, it's not like vlogging style where the focus changes all the time. I mean, actually with the new firmware, with the firmware 2.3, it went a lot better with the autofocus. So especially when you do headshots, when you use the face tracking and so on. It got so much better and it doesn't hunt that much anymore for the focus. So that was a huge problem before, but it's still not perfect. So I wouldn't rely on that. And especially when I want to do some other movements with my cam camera, not just filming people or so on, but filming landscapes. And it's always better to focus manual. And I must actually say that on the GH5, it works pretty good because what the GH5 has is a combination of the manual focus and the autofocus. So you're basically in manual mode, but when you press the focus button, then you can simply autofocus. So it focuses automatically and then you're automatically in manual mode again. And that's pretty cool because it makes it a lot quicker and easier to focus. You don't need to use the ring or something for that. And yeah, that's how I do it most of the time. Of course, I will show you a bit more on how I make some specific focus techniques here. So let's check that out. That's actually how I set up my main autofocus. I simply set the AF slash MF to on in the menu. It's pretty easy. And what I also do from the settings, of course, is also that I use focus peaking so that you get like a red border. You can actually choose the color around your object. And that's so good for me because especially with this small display, it's sometimes very hard to see what I'm focusing on and that really helps a lot. I mean, of course, it could make sense to use a bigger monitor or something or at least use my tablet or my phone or something to monitor. I actually do that right now to set my focus because actually setting it up via the image app when you're farther away from the camera like I am right now works very good. I really love that app for it. And, but still, even with here, like even if I turn my smartphone to widescreen, there's just this very small, I don't even know if you can see that, but like the preview image is very small and it's very hard to see that if the focus is very perfect. But now I can see here clearly there are those red stripes around me, so I'm perfectly in focus, that's great. And I mean, not everyone wants to have an external monitor or something, especially when you travel like me, because most of my shots happen pretty fast. I see something and I need to get the shot and there's not much time to set everything up. That's also one reason why in most of my shots I don't use a gimbal, simply because it takes too much time to set it up. And I mean, like sometimes you walk around and of course I could set up my gimbal setup before, but then there is one shot where the gimbal is just in my way. I mean, probably the DJI Ronin S would make it a bit easier because like this um, back motor is under the camera. So you could simply look through that. <laughs> but right now I have the Geon Crane and sometimes it's just not convenient to use then. So most of my shots can easily be done without a gimbal, especially when I stabilize it a little bit in post. So 
that's just for me i don't really need a bigger monitor or something the focus peaking works perfectly and to make it more clear here like in the videos that i shot this year i never used a gimbal like the complete year in the past six months i didn't use a gimbal so when you watch my videos then check it out what you can do with a gh5 even when you don't have a gimbal the stabilization just is so good of course i do a lot of stabilization in post-production i use a lock and load plugin and also the internal stabilization of final cut and that helps a lot, yeah. So, yeah, let's explore the place a little bit more, right? <laughs> wow, well, that was awesome. Did you see the Varan? It was so big, I was walking in the direction of the stairs and suddenly this big thing was in front of me on the stairs and watching me like, what? I got such a shock. <laughs> I mean, they are not really dangerous, but like he, he, that was very big. So I was a bit like, oh, careful. <laughs> That's so nice here. There are so much reptiles on the island, of course. And at first you got shocked. Like I also saw some snakes here and so on, but it's also like the adventure here. I really love that. And of course you can also get a lot of nice shots here of those reptiles. Around this beach are actually a lot of varans or lizards, how you call it. And this is because here goes some rivers that ends from the waterfalls around here in the ocean. And so those animals really love such places. So get a bit more like water and so on. Actually a few days ago, I saw a lot of them swimming around here. So they are everywhere here. If you want to see Varans, then definitely go here. But you can also do a lot more with that. So for example, you can do a focus transition and that is what I really love about this GH5 because let's say you want to switch the focus between your foreground and your background object in your shot. And in that case, if you would simply autofocus on the other point on the background, for example, then it first becomes all blurry and then it focuses. So that doesn't look good. And what Panasonic did there, they implemented one functionality which is called focus transition. You also find it in the menu and you can set up to three focus points there. I usually use two and how you set it up is you set the focus point at first that you want to have as a second point actually. Then you set the other focus point like the foreground object in my example here and then you simply press start in the menu and when you press the menu button then, then it automatically changes the focus. So of course you need to record before, but that works pretty good and it makes it so easy to get focus transitions on the GH5. The weather is actually a bit crazy at the moment. We had a small shower before and I mean right now it's sun, but it looks like from the clouds that rain is coming soon. So I think I would need to finish here, but that's, that was it for focusing on the GH5. You see, it's actually pretty simple and I don't really know why so much people complain about it. I mean, the autofocus is really not that reliable, but especially with the uh, um, 2.3 firmware now, like when you do autofocus like for vlogging or so on, like Casey Neistat style, then it definitely works. And for all the other shots, you don't need autofocus. You can all use those internal stuff like manual and focus transition and it works perfectly and it's actually better to use that when you want to get great shots because with that you can make sure that everything looks perfect because otherwise even with Sony or, or Canon or whatever cameras you can never really 100% control the autofocus. So I personally would only shoot autofocus when it's completely necessary and there's no other options. So that's just my two cents here. I really love the GH5. It is a great job also from the focusing. Oh, I needed to switch hands. The Panasonic is actually not that lightweight. 
So yeah, of course I, I train every day, but uh, you know, it hurts sometimes. So now my arm feels better, so I can do the outro. So I do two videos per week right now, one on Thursday, like tutorial videos, and one like that where I go outside, show you around and give you some tips. So if you want more videos of that, then please hit the subscribe button now and don't miss out the next one. See you. Fucking raining, best time for the beach.